Ford following in Tesla's tire tracks, if you will, this week, cutting prices of its electric crossover Mustang Mach-E by as much as $5,900 per vehicle. Senior Autos reporter Proz remain in here with more on the price drop. Proz, it seems like nobody had a choice in the matter after Elon made that move. I mean, this is all, this is all in response to Tesla, right? They, they dropped the, they kind of dro- dropped the gauntlet? Dropped the... <laughs> Yes, I think <laughs> some so. sort of gauntlet was dropped, right? So, yeah, I mean, they. I don't cut think pr- you drop a gauntlet, actually, but, but proceed. <laughs> <laughs> I think you run the gauntlet. Run the gauntlet. Drop the something. You, you drop the hammer. Drop the hammer. <laughs> yes, yes, the axe. Cut, cut those prices. Uh, we are off the tracks. Get back on them. I'll try. So, uh, by by as little as six hundred to, like you said, almost six thousand dollars across the range of Mustang Mach-E's. There, you know, trying to compete with Tesla. Also, one of the most popular models there, the E Performance All-Wheel Drive, I think, of the Mach-E, below that fifty-five thousand dollar price cap. Very important for those EV tax credits. So, big deal for Ford. You know, Ford said, "quote We are not going to cede ground to anyone." So, some strong words there. That's he's alluding, alluding to Tesla. They also said they're going to increase production. They didn't say by how much they are going to do this year, but they sold around 40,000 Mustang Mach-Es in 2022. So I imagine you'll see a decent lift from that. Yeah, certainly a number of these automakers feeling the pressure here following these price cuts. Press, it's interesting when you take a look at Wall Street's reaction because at first there was so much worry about what this was going to do with margins. Now it seems like that sentiment has shifted a little bit. More and more are getting optimistic. There was a new upgrade today on the stock, a little bit more positive outlook here going forward for Tesla. Yeah, Berenberg upgraded Tesla from uh, a hold to buy here, talking about how these these, the concerns over price cuts were misguided. They talk about how, you know what, in the short term, yes, it might affect margins, but in the long term, as factories like, like Berlin, sorry, Austin, Berlin, and also you know, Shanghai, also they build more, they can build at a cheaper level, and that's gonna offset some of those price cut concerns, margin concerns, so uh, the analysts are upgraded stock. They also um, downgraded st- GM and also BMW here, talking about weaker demand supply chain, and also price mix concerns. Although they said that luxury cars can kind of weather a bit more high, charge a bit more for, for luxury cars that won't actually affect the sales too much. Just be curious though, Ford doesn't have the margins that Tesla does. So when they make that $5,900 price cut, that's far more significant for them than it may be Tesla. All right, sticking with electrification, you saw a new class of race cars at Daytona this weekend. What do we know about yeah. this? Yeah, you know, you know, Dave, at, at Daytona, the, the 24-hour race, a big deal there. A new uh, era of hyper cars there, racing cars here. These cars are actually hybrid powers, power, hybrid-powered cars, Acura, Cadillac, BMW, and Porsche all competing in this new class. Super fast cars, really kind of high-tech. You kind of hear them in the pit lane actually going all electric quietly, then they fire up the engine, they get going. So anyway, you know, I talked to Cadillac's head of global head, Rory Harvey, about this, about these cars, about how that hybrid tech trickles down into road cars, but also kind of like, what's the reaction been to the brand actually kind of going, pushing forward at full EVs? And he spoke to dealers and also customers about that, and here's what he had to say. Dependent upon where dealers sit, as an example, some areas uh, EV adoption is uh, much more progressive than others. Um, there's no doubt that EV adoption is happening. Uh, I guess it's a question as to how quick and uh, and where. Um, but our dealers are really excited. You know, we had them all together in San Francisco last year. We showed them our product portfolio through to 2025. Uh, most of the feedback that we got from that from our dealer partners was exceptional. As an example, we measured their responses and on the product portfolio going forward. On a rating out of six, they gave us 5.9. So uh, they're super pumped up, super excited. Um, you know, if you looked at last year, we really did have a solid year. So, you know, if you exclude Tesla and you look at the traditional luxury brands, Cadillac was the fastest growing traditional luxury brand here in the US with 13.9% growth year on year. Uh, it was a challenging year the year before, but it was a challenging year for the industry and for all of our competitors. So uh, we were super pleased with the foundations that we were able to build there. So 14% growth year over year there for Cadillac. Uh, Rory also did tell me that we have a new car coming out, a new EV coming out in the first half of this year and another one in the back half of the year. So two big kind of announcements coming up for them. Are they going to get on an F1 team, though? That's the big question in my world. Then with Andretti Autosport, they really want in. They have the financial backing. Guggenheim, I think, covering the $200 million. You think they get in? Yeah, I mean, I asked him about that, and he said that that entrance is, is sort of like it's up to the FIA, right, and yeah. they don't want to admit them. But he said that we are very excited about that. 
It's a global, Cadillac's a global brand. They sell huge in China, actually pretty big in Europe too. So they really want to get on that stage with Andretti Auto, Autosport, uh, get that F1 entry. I mean, this is a big deal for, for the company. And you're going to hear a lot more about that, a big brand yeah. going to F1. Maybe a great move for the sport, yeah. help with American interests, just my POV. Pros, thank you. Good stuff.